This is a poetry verse video for Poppies by Jane Weir. First, let's read the poem. Three days before Armistice Sunday and poppies had already been placed on individual war graves. Before you left, I pinned one onto your lapel, crimped petals, spasms of paper red, disrupting a blockade of yellow bias binding around your blazer. Sellotape bandaged around my hand, I rounded up as many white cat hairs as I could, smoothed down your shirt's upturned collar, steeled the softening of my face. I wanted to graze my nose across the tip of your nose, play it being Eskimos like we did when you were little. I resisted the impulse to run my fingers through the gelled blackthorns of your hair. All my words flattened, rolled, turned into felt, slowly melting. I was brave as I walked with you to the front door, threw it open, the world overflowing like a treasure chest. A split second and you were away, intoxicated. After you'd gone and went into your bedroom, releasing a songbird from its cage. Later a single dove flew from the pear tree, and this is where it has led me, skirting the churchyard walls, my stomach busy making tucks, darts, pleats, hatless, without a winter coat or reinforcements of scarf, gloves. On reaching the top of the hill, I traced the inscriptions on the war memorial, leaned against it like a wishbone. The dove pulled freely against the sky an ornamental stitch. I listened, hoping to hear your playground voice catching on the wind. The poem follows a mother who watches her son leave, presumably for the army. We see her struggle with the emotional ramifications of conflict as she searches for reminders of him. The title itself refers to the poppies that are traditionally used in remembrance for those who give their lives for our country, ominously hinting at the fate of the narrator's son. The poem is about a mother describing her son leaving home, seemingly to join the army. Sad, lonely, scared, the mother's emotional reaction runs through the poem. Conflict is presented as isolating, traumatising, personal. The first person narrative allows the reader to understand the mother's emotions, while enjambment and an absence of regular rhythm or rhyme emphasises how the narrator is almost lost in her thoughts while the use of Shizura could also echo as she is trying to control and compose them. The chronological form of the poem follows the mother preparing, the son leaving and her then dealing with the aftermath. However, the time frame is ambiguous, mixing childhood memories and the memories of her son's leaving, suggesting that his fate is undetermined. Our first quotation is spasms of paper red, disrupting a blockade. The mother describes pinning a poppy onto her son's lapel before he leaves, and remarks how it clashes with the yellow binding on his blazer, implying that he has some kind of status within the army. We have the noun spasms, the adjective red, the verb disrupting, and the noun blockade. The noun spasms has connotations of pain, and could make the reader think of a person who has been injured. The adjective red has connotations of love, but also blood and danger. This could symbolise the mother's love for her son, but also the obvious, unavoidable danger that he's putting himself in. The verb disrupting could symbolise how the war has created a barrier between the mother and her son, reinforced by the noun blockade, which implies she feels shut out from her son's life. Blockade, spasms and bandage from the next stanza create a semantic field of war. It seems that the effects of it were creeping into their everyday lives, even before we left. Both spasms and bandaged create an image of being wounded, ominously foreshadowing the conditions the son is about to experience. Our next quotation is, I was brave as I walked with you to the front door, threw it open, the world overflowing like a treasure chest. This quotation is obviously massive, therefore I don't expect you to remember all of it. However, there are loads of ideas going on. Structurally, the use of fractured syntax, the excessive commas that break everything up, echoes the way in which the mother is emotionally fractured and is almost tearing up as she remembers watching her son leave. We have fractured syntax, we have the adjective brave, we have the verbs walked through and overflowing, and the simile, like a treasure chest. The adjective brave emphasises that it's not just those who go to fight who have to act this way. 
it's the people who are left at home too. The verb walked has connotations of calmness and assurance, juxtaposing with the verb through, which emphasises her anger towards the situation. It seems that she has to put on a brave face for her son, but she can't hide her true feelings. The fractured syntax creates a disrupted rhythm, echoing how the mother struggles with her emotions when she watched her son leave, and now struggles to recall the story. It splits the actions up into little pieces, more manageable, as though she could only deal with one simple thing at a time. This is undercut by the verb overflowing, as everything suddenly becomes too much, the emotion, the fear, the task ahead of a son. The simile shows the world from her son's perspective. It makes his duty seem exciting, precious and special, emphasising how differently people can see war and conflict. Our final quotation is hoping to hear your playground voice catching on the wind. The concept of a playground voice allows the whole poem to echo the idea of a child's first day at school. The mother experiences the same relatable feelings of vulnerability and helplessness but on a far larger scale. We have the alliteration of the two verbs, hoping and hear. We have the adjective, playground, and the verb, catching. The verb, hoping, emphasises the mother's desperation for any news about her son. It is ambiguous as to what has happened to him. The verb, here, links to the sensory motif that runs through the poem. She wants to run her fingers through his hair, graze his nose, and she traced her hand across the war memorial. It reinforces the distance between her and her son. She is completely isolated and helpless. The adjective playground has connotations of childhood. Her little boy is gone, one way or another, and now she wants him back. The verb catching implies permanence and creates an image of someone holding on to something. It contrasts with away and gone earlier in the poem. She wants any reminder of him, something real and tangible that is stronger than her mere memories.